תתחיל. הנה, בוא עכשיו אתה נורא דומה, אני לא רגיל לזה, אני כאילו... What's up, Liron here, thank you for joining me in this video, today we're trying out something a little different, I have Daniel with me, he'll probably say hi later on, um, but what we're doing is, I'm doing a study for myself, uh, this is actually a painting that a student of mine, uh, we did together and we completely <laughs> messed it up, but then we were able to pull it off together, but what I want to do is do another study for myself and figure out where we went wrong and how I can uh, improve it, okay, so... Let's get started. So I'm starting with the drawing. I'm running this at double speed because that's really not the main po point of this video. But what I want to show you is notice the layering in the reference photo. It's very obvious. Uh, the, the topmost layers, the farthest away are very blue and muted. And then as the closer we, we get to the foreground, it gets a little more, uh, gets a little warmer, a little stronger f uh, contrasts. Um, now notice the nice zigzag pattern. That's one of the really beautiful things about this scene. You have one hill coming from top right to the middle left, and then another one coming out of that, and just continues moving on in a zigzag manner. At this stage, I'm working on the focal point, which is the barn, the ranch, the, the couple of buildings there. That's where most of the interest is going to come from, and how we'll create a feeling of foreground, middle ground, and background, okay? Uh, and the hills will provide us as a, as a supportive role to that kind of thing, okay? So we're gonna finish drawing soon, and I'll talk about the painting stage. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the, the scene from afar. What you wanna do is squint your eyes and notice just the general trends of where the foliage is, where the trees are. If you get too caught up in details right now, you're gonna mess it up you won't be able to pull off something that's cohesive. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do, and this is why my sketch, come show them, my sketch is so loose, there's nothing there, like this is this should be a barn or whatever, there's nothing there. It's so loose and free, but that's, that's the fun of it. Um, and especially in the beginning, it can be useful to have that kind of approach. So Daniel here had an insight, he just said that I'm a very fast sketcher. And yeah, that's how I, that's how, I even forgot what the point was, but, um, uh, that's how I prefer it. I, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna, I don't need much to work with. All I need is just some guidelines to let me know where it is. I find that if you go too much, have too heavy with the pencil, you won't know what to do with the brush. It will constrain your thought. So this is why I do it that way. Plus, I don't want to bore you guys and you, Daniel. So we have to work. I'm fine. Very. <laughs> we have to work very fast here. So I'm gonna do the first wash now. Here we go. Very fun, free, starting blue. And as I move down the, the paper, I'm gonna to start to add more yellows and greens and reds. But in the farther distance, you wanna make sure that it's still quite muted to give off this feeling of depth and scale even. I'm just gonna blend some of the edges here. Everything is going to be much darker and what you see now is going to be the highlights. That's essentially the highlights. Now sometimes it's hard blending, so what you do is you grab a piece of tissue and you just go like that and it will get the edge to disappear. That's a really neat trick for you. So moving on with this uh, first wash, now I'm starting to warm things up the closer we get to us. And again, notice the angle at which my paper rests. That plays a really big role in helping the paint stay down, move downwards. By the way, sorry about the weird crop to the side, the black bars. That's because we filmed vertically with my iPhone. Should have filmed really horizontally, but uh, I wanted to be able to use this for some other things. So my bad, sorry for that. Uh, now with the bottom part, the only thing I really care about is leaving the highlights. That's the one thing that matters. So I'm going to paint over and around the buildings and around the highlights. Actually, I'm going to paint around the buildings because I'm going to add their shadows in just a moment. But the, as, the, as long as I don't hit the highlights, I'm fine. Okay. And this is why I always say, and I show this to you in the, one of the recent videos, how the uh, first wash does not matter one bit. It, it's all about setting up some temperatures, some value, a very gentle representation of value, but nothing more than that. You could mess everything up, flip the colors, do everything wrong, and still the final result is going to be really, really cool. Um, or on the other hand, you can do what I'm doing here, which is take your time, make sure everything is in the right spot, uh, and make sure that the right colors, for example, right now I switched to uh, red for this 
uh, barn or whatever that is because I want to have it warmer. It, it looks warmer in the reference photo. So I'm kind of switching my colors and I'll randomly merge different areas that have a similar color or a different color. For example, the rooftop of that uh, the structure and the houses looked a little like a, a warm blue to me. So I just connected it to the bottom red for the wall. I connected essentially the wall and the rooftop. So I will do these kinds of things. It's very random at times and a lot of people wonder how you know when to do it. You just paint a lot and you slowly learn what types of things you enjoy doing and merging together. Okay, that's that's basically it. Just there's no replacement for doing a lot of painting and trying to find a way to let go um, because letting go allows you to experiment, try new things and be more spontaneous, uh, which is exactly what the course I'm working on is going to be all about, allowing you to do that kind of thing. I think it's crucial for uh, getting better. So we're really near the end of this stage and then I'm going to do some uh, talking because Daniel filmed me up close so I can ex explain some more of my uh, thoughts on this uh, and then we'll continue. What I'm going to do now is I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm trying to simplify it into several shapes, not just starting individually. So what I'll do is I'll treat this whole thing in the background as one piece. I'm going to negative paint around uh, this lighter area and that'll make it pop and then I'll connect it to this part that's a little more in the foreground. And that's how you just work area by area by area until you have everything there. Usually when people say that they don't like the painting, it's just that they haven't finished. So as if you're finding yourself like, oh no, I completely messed it up, it's mostly BS. You're just, you still have work to do. That's what I find at least. So it's, it should encourage you because it means it's really hard to mess it up completely, especially when it's so light. Uh, so don't worry about that too much. Now I'm gonna mute it down. It's gonna be fairly gray and we're in the background. We're not in the foreground now. And this is the most important work, the mixing, uh, making sure everything looks right. Now what I do want to do is lower the angle a bit because I don't need the paint running down like crazy. So here we go. And I'm just going to get started. We'll see what happens. So that's one. And you see how light or dark it is. If I need it, need it to be lighter or darker, that's just part of it. Now you don't want to do a straight line because that can be a little boring. So what we're going to do is break it off with some trees. We'll break it off with some different elements that are a little closer in the uh, middle ground. Uh, maybe even negative paint around some lighter shapes just to have that variety in. But the more we go back, further we go upwards, we want to start blending that in. It doesn't need to be this, uh, this dark. And I'm just continuing this line using almost only water and a damp brush, barely any paint, and I'm blending it all back. Now, already I have a group of trees here, so I'm gonna connect it all. And by the way, this is the first time we do this kind of thing when I'm being filmed by someone, so I'm just assuming that it's gonna be terrible for now, uh, the result, because I, I will definitely be more focused if I'm just working at it by myself. So you'll have to forgive the result if it's not as good. Sometimes though, the, the other thing happens, the other extreme, it's like perfect because you didn't have enough time to overthink things, you just go for it and you get an even better result, who knows. Uh, now I'm connecting this kind of shape together here. Okay. So hopefully uh, it'll make sense. A part of the challenge is really staying on the path even when it seems like it's not gonna connect. Uh, you have to kind of believe that it will work somehow uh, because sometimes it doesn't look like it, and, you know. Just a bit of faith and it may end up working out. Now I do want to pull this now I do want to pull this area to the right I'm kind of putting it in one quick go so that creates this nice effect of I didn't try too hard um, especially around the edges where you don't want everything to be very hyper pronounced. Uh, now we're gonna get something that's fairly abstract here I can already tell it's not gonna be super duper accurate. That's fine, the reference actually demands it. But as we move towards the foreground, the, the foreground, sorry, uh, we will have to start taking things into more consideration and that's when our accuracy will really uh, start working for us in our favor. I'm just putting in some trees, some bushes. The light comes from the left. So if I do wanna put some cast shadows, I'm gonna put them to the right. Hopefully that makes sense. There is this hedge here that casts uh, some kind of a shadow to the right. 
But then again, it's all green. So a lot of the process is me putting in something, then figuring out, oh, okay, I need to continue it, I need to pause it. Um, a lot of it is intuitive, really. Uh, it's a bit hard to, to just give it as an explanation. Uh, you really have to feel through the moment, um, which is why it's sometimes a challenge to teach. Um, but still, very possible, if you're very observant, you will get it. Now, I'm putting in a bit of red, just because if you look at the reference, there is a bit of, there are spots of color here and there. And I do want to put them in because that actually adds a lot of interest to an otherwise muted, um, really muted uh, painting so far. We have a, just about a bunch of greens and blues. That's not enough sometimes. So I do want to do that. So a bit of red here. Who knows what that is. Now we're getting to the real dark spot. And I think I'll just cover it up. I won't talk too much also. And, and we'll do negative painting around this. The, the bunch of houses here. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a challenging part, but we'll uh, power through. We'll get it. So let's do it. <laughs> so now comes the most important part, I think, and that is starting to treat the middle to foreground. Uh, the background is pretty much established. I may change some things around or add some minor details, but what I want to do now is really take care of that uh, middle ground to foreground, which are meant to be the center of interest in the painting and to create or um, uh, grant it some kind of meaning beyond just, um, you know, some nice hills and, and a very loose abstract feel to it. By the way, sorry I didn't cut out the mixing. Actually, that's my bad. I should have cut them out because you can't see my palette, unfortunately, in this angle. Sorry about that as well. Again, I'm trying a bit of a new setup so someone's filming me so you can better see me as I talk. But the, and, and see better close-ups of the painting process. The downside is indeed that you can't see my setup in the normal way uh, I usually show it. So bear with me with this process. Um, this is just an experiment. The next video isn't probably going to be like that. It's going to be back to the normal or, or format or maybe um, back to um, the, the old form. I don't know. I don't know. But most of my tutorials are going to be, you know, upper angle, like normal stuff. Uh, so now I'm getting close to that uh, rooftop and I want to make sure that I leave the highlights. So notice on the reference photo, which is a beautiful, I didn't even say it, uh, one of my uh, painting students uh, took this picture in Wales, so uh, close to where he grew up and, I, and it was just beautiful. So I asked him if I can use it for the tutorial and um, it's it's just a lovely uh, photo has a lot of good things going for it also very challenging because the light and the contrast isn't as starking it's a bit of a an overcast i guess light you would call it uh, but a very beautiful scene so now i painted around the roof the roof of the house and if you notice you can see two nice chimneys uh, later on you'll see i'll lose one of the highlights accidentally and then i'll bring it back with a white gel pen I was explaining to Daniel some of what I was doing while I was doing it, but uh, some of these parts uh, are in, in Hebrew or you won't understand them, so uh, so I didn't include them. Now I'm starting to really push it, and what I felt like was that this um, structure needed a, a red roof. Uh, I don't know why, it just looked better to me. I love red roofs, so I just go ahead with red. I glazed, uh, this is actually quinacridone rose by White Knights, St. Petersburg. The paints I'm using here are uh, quinacridone rose, I use a uh, phthalo blue, it's called bright blue, I believe, by uh, St. Petersburg. Um, and the yellow is a nickel azo yellow. So I'm using this kind of standard palette I'm always using. Um, now I'm starting to darken it near the wall, but the most important part, and this is a part we messed up in the original painting, was that the roof, the, the house wall on the right, we got it too dark. And that really hurt the sense of light and shadow in the entire reference. So here I'm really trying to push it to be dark, but not too dark. If you look at a reference photo, it's not that dark, really. Um, and a lot of what feels incorrect about a painting has to do with the uh, values being off. So if something feels a little detached or like a hole in the paper, that's it's too light. And if something feels too, usually it feels kind of too bold almost, 
then it's too dark usually. And with time, you'll learn how to notice these things. You know, a lot of it comes down to just experience. What I say is this, you paint and you match the values and you do your best to to match them, to create an interesting composition and to uh, use nice and interesting colors. And, and the more you fail, the more feedback you get. Oh, okay, so this is a way that doesn't work. And here's a way that works a little better. And here's a way that works, that doesn't work at all. It's terrible. You get this feedback. And if you're able to get into a place where you enjoy painting and you do it a lot and you don't get discouraged, then you get into a very nice feedback loop that will tell you exactly what to fix, how to fix it, how to get better. And this is the place I want you to be in, okay? To lose all that judgmental self-judgment and feeling bad about your work or over judging it um, when in fact it's usually just work in progress so you postpone your um, you know your judgment of it and you are able to enjoy the process much more um, and that's that's the place I want you to be in so now if you look at the fields on the left it's a little darker it's not as light as it was so I'm adding another glaze carefully painting around the, the different structures, mainly around the highlights. I'm leaving a little gap here for the row of trees or bushes or foliage or whatever. And I'm gonna add a bit of darkness next to it soon as well. And notice how this brings the foreground into the scene. It feels much, much better. Um, it feels like it's an inherent part of the scene now. And I still have a lot of details to put in actually in the middle ground and background, some trees and so on. But uh, but for now, it starts to work really well. Uh, as soon as I'll add some shadows to the barn here on the left and connect them to the ground, um, it will also look really nice. And um, you want to pay attention to the points at which the buildings connect to the ground. That's always a uh, danger zone for, uh, for uh, what was I going to say? For It just feels very awkward if the connection point looks off. You know what I mean? If it looks too strong or uh, too strongly contrasted, it just doesn't look good. Okay, so we want to pay attention to that. Now you put in this kind of a road in a, in a wet and wet, and now I'm putting in this kind of rows of trees and foliage here, which will add some more details to the foreground. I don't need much in the foreground. Uh, now this was too dark, so I'm coming back with some uh, more water, and you'll see how it helps it move. And also I changed the color a bit. And the, the floor still isn't fully dry, so you will get to see this kind of hopefully melt a little bit into the green and I decided to, to indeed contrast it with uh, some pure blue. Uh, adding some red to the rooftop of the barn in just a moment will really bring it out in a nice little way and I'm also connecting there's a shadow to the right that kind of connects the two areas together. Sometimes the meaning aka what you paint doesn't matter as much as what it looks like. So this shadow to the right doesn't necessarily exist there but I put it there because it feels like it needed that connection with the right section and the left section. Okay, now I'm using a bit of a different red uh, for the barn's rooftop. It's a little bit of a warmer red, kind of a scarlet or pyrrole scarlet or cadmium. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a bit and we'll continue later with the narration. So now I'm starting to look at the different areas and figure out on a macro level, did I darken everything enough or is some, something popping too much and what I can see here is that uh, this area needs some muting down so I'm just going over it with some yellow and it doesn't even matter what's there this is what you have to realize it's kind of just me looking at the reference thing okay it feels a little darker there so I'm just doing it as I see it um, the moment you're able to let go of what you see the content of what you see and just focus on how it looks like, if you just squint your eyes or if you look at it as an abstract shape, that's the moment you, you'll win because it just turns everything into something that's possible. Uh, basically, you can paint even full portraits, have them even realistic if you just look at the abstract shapes of the face, you know, shadow here, light there, and you just figure out slowly but surely, you just have to make sure that the technique supports it, that your watercolor technique supports it. Um, but that's, that's just a very... I think a low level thing, you get that really fast and then it's all about the expression, I guess, the your personal expression. So 
Yeah. And the next step is to just add a couple of small details to the buildings and to everything, make it a little sharper, bring it to the forefront. Maybe do a couple of touches here once this dries to strengthen some areas, differentiate the trees from the hill, you know, because the trees are dark. We're, we're going to have to add a bit more darkness to them. That'll put things in the right uh, balance. Now, I want to go back real quick to what I said earlier. It really, again, does not matter sometimes what you paint. What matters is what it looks like. Um, if you can paint something abstractly and make it look good and make sense from afar, you've done the job right. Um, if you try and paint literally what you see in a very literal sense, you'll get two out of uh, you'll get one out of two options. First, if you're really skilled and you know what you're doing, you'll get a hyper realistic painting. That's great if that's what you're after. It's not what I'm after. So, uh, what I, what I will probably get, it's not my skill set too, is a too crowded, too busy, too weird of a painting. Um, which is why I make sure I constantly as you've seen me doing back there, um taking a few steps back, looking at the painting from afar and figuring out what works and what doesn't. Do I need to add some dark stains to the middle ground? And notice the 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 wording I used, uh, dark stains, it's not even trees, you know, it's just a compositional means to add some details there. Um, and by the way, this is what I'm explaining here as well. I'm just explaining it in Hebrew, so yeah. Um, do I need to strengthen the contrast between the middle ground and the background? That's a possibility, which is what I'm doing here as well. I'm adding these trees around the borders of the middle ground and towards the background to make a stronger separation between them, you see? So all of these are just compositional means. They, they don't have any real meaning per se, which is really a, an interesting thing to think about because the painting is, again, an illusion. I heard Alvaro Castanet say it, and it's so true. The painting is an illusion. It's painting not necessarily what's there, but what it appears to be or what it looks like in your unique vision. So many of the questions people ask actually about painting can be reduced to um, a very simple answer. What Do what you want. So um, what colors do you use? How do you paint this kind of thing? How do you paint that kind of thing? Well, do what you want. Do what matches your vision. Do what you like, what you enjoy. That's the, the bottom line for many of the questions. Um, but the real answer is practice really, really hard until you know what you want. And that's the answer that n some people don't want to hear and, and then they get discouraged. So uh, that's the answer for like 99% of the questions. <laughs> but in any case, now I'm going to explain a bit more and show up close uh, what I'm doing. So I feel like the background now has enough details in, especially if you look from afar, you do get the sense of depth. Uh, in it, I added some dark spots to the trees and that really differentiates this part from this part. Okay, that's the main thing here. Uh, now we're done with everything that's from here and above. All we have left to do is put in some details in the houses and the barn and everything. Uh, and that's really when you have to be a little more careful and a little more concentrated. So I'm going to do my best, but I'll still notice how I hold the brush. I'm still very much letting it move freely. I'm not doing this. I'm not even doing this. I'm gonna be pretty free here and we'll see what we get. At some point I'll have to put my hand on the on the uh, board because otherwise it'll be almost impossible maybe to get some of the lines here. But I'm trying to postpone that as much as possible. Um, because it just adds a bit more spontaneity to your... I'd much rather practice the way, this way of doing things and actually improving in it than uh, using a crutch or you know, working in a very careful manner and never learning how to do that. So I'm giving up some upside in return to being able to do these things in the long run. And a lot of the techniques I show you are hard. They are challenging and you, you do need to practice them and it may even handicap you because, um, you know, you're holding the brush in a bit of a different manner. Um, but there is an upside to it. I am aware that it's not the easiest way of doing things sometimes, it's not the, the go-to for many people, but for me I like to do it that way. Now hopefully the details I put in right now will be enough to hold this together as, as something, as, as a, something to look at and to uh, enjoy and give you enough of a, of a contrast on a more abstract level, but also in, in a manner of understanding what you're looking at.
looking at understanding this is a building and these are barns and maybe there are people and cars there so um, so yeah hopefully that works I will put my hand as I said I won't do just here to put in this very gentle line the shadow under the rooftop I actually kind of messed it up but I don't care and some shadows so I cheated a little I <laughs> I accidentally dropped this highlight so I just came back with my white gel pen put it right back in and now we're good now funny enough this is almost almost done now we're, we're getting to the moment of you have to ask yourself is what I'm adding helping or detracting from what I have now I feel like I could put in you know there's a doorway here and notice how big of a difference that makes there's a shadow under this shed here um, there are a lot of small nuanced details but you have to continuously ask yourself is this helping the painting or am I starting to go into overwork land when it starts to be overwork you have to learn how to stop for me I do want to strengthen this yet again I feel like that's the main part of the painting there is this triangular shape here but honestly I'll tell you I think it's done now I think this one is finished I'm gonna sign it and it's ready to go good job <laughs> and yeah I'm happy it has everything it has the looseness it has the um, some areas that are tight and allow you to focus on something you know uh, to find the thing that, that captures your imagination and then the background plays the secondary role that it should play and there are um, I would say two main areas of interest this part here and then your eye moves a bit to the back and finally to the mountains and leaves the the painting. You have to be able to get in the position of doing a lot of these very quick works. Uh, I think the total time was maybe, I don't know, like 30, 35 minutes, 35 minutes. For, for all of this process. You have to get in the habit of running through paper like crazy and getting rid of more and more paper. Like Just approach the painting from a, from a place of, I'm going to destroy it, I'm going to ruin it. I'm, I'm starting from, from the assumption of, I don't know if it's going to be any good, and just do that a lot of times and you'll improve for sure.